Hey! Oh, hey! Hope you are doing so, so good today. So you know, we're gonna do another children's lesson. But first, we gotta do an activity. And here's today's activity. This is what you're gonna do. You are going to act like you're jumping into a mud puddle. How would you jump into a mud puddle? Would you get a run and start and then jump into it? Or would you just stand still and jump? So, you can get with your family and you can do this activity. So, have a great time doing this activity. So, for the activity, you acted like you jumped into a mud puddle. Now, what if you were getting ready to jump into the mud puddle and you thought, I have on new clothes. What if I jump in and I get my clothes dirty? So, you go, I can't do that. Or, maybe your parents have told you don't jump into that mud puddle and you get to that mud puddle and you're like oh, I want to jump in so guess what and you don't do it you have self-control and that's what we're gonna be talking about today so self-control is the last fruit of the spirit fruit of the spirit let's go back let's review Let's, all, let's go all the way back to the beginning. So, the first one was love. Second one, joy. Peace. Patience. Kindness. Goodness. Faithfulness. Gentleness. You got it. Today, we're going to be talking about self-control. Now, Let's think about other examples of self-control. See, in this picture, there's a little boy and he has his back turned to the cake. And maybe he's been told, don't eat that cake yet. So he's turned his back. Maybe he's trying to have self-control because he doesn't want to eat it. He wants to be obedient. Oh, here's another picture. There's a little girl and she sees the cookie jar. She's up at the counter, and she really wants to eat those cookies. But maybe she's been told, don't eat them yet. So she has self-control. Well, I want you to think, who do you think has the most self-control? Hmm, let's think. Well, we're going to read about him in the Bible, and that is Jesus. Jesus had the most self-control. So we're going to read in Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. It says, Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was hungry. Then the tempter approached him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. He answered, It is written, Man must not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city, had him stand on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will give his angels orders concerning you, and they will support you with their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. Jesus told him, It is also written, Do not test the Lord your God. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to him, I will give you these things if you will fall down and worship me. And Jesus told him, Go away, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God 
and serve him only. Then the devil left him, and the angels came and began to serve him. So, Jesus had not eaten for 40 days and 40 nights. Now, that's a long time. Now, to think about this, today, we see that it is March 21st. So, let's think about the beginning of the month, which would be March 1st. So, 40 days would be this. It's 31 days in March. So, let's say Jesus went a whole month without eating, and then nine more days in the next month. That's a long time without eating. So I know for myself, I get hungry every few hours. You may do the same thing. So Jesus, led by the Spirit, he was in the wilderness, and there's the devil. And so the devil tempted him. Now we know uh, temptation is, is when maybe there's like a sin, maybe you're tempted to lie about something. You think, I can do this, because if I, if I tell the truth, I'll, I'll get in trouble, maybe. But you know what? We think, well, I'm going to get in even more trouble if I lie about this. And so you say, I, I'm not going to do that. So you're kind of tempted. So Jesus was tempted to sin, to do something wrong, because Satan said, Turn these stones into bread. And Jesus was hungry. And the devil knew that. And you know what Jesus did? He said, man can't live on bread alone. So he used the Bible. He used the scripture to tell, tell the devil, I'm not going to do this. So he was tempted, but he used the Bible. So he was talking about being tempted to eat. And so he said, hey, we can't live on bread alone. And what he's talking about is bread is good, food is good, but what's more important is the Bible. This would be spiritual food. And when we read the Bible, we get closer to God. And we grow in a relationship with Him. So food is good, but reading the Bible and understanding it is even better. Now, let's look at the next temptation. We see that the devil said, told Jesus to throw himself down. And you know what? We see that Jesus, he used the scripture again. He said, you know, you're not supposed to test God. And then there's the, the last temptation. The devil showed him all these kingdoms. You can have all these kingdoms. And you think of a world kingdom. Let's think about if you've like been downtown Greenville and you see all the buildings. So the devil said, hey, you can have all of this. But you have to worship me. So the devil wanted Jesus to worship him. And Jesus, no, you're just supposed to worship God alone. And then he tells him, go away, Satan. And so we see that Satan leaves. So Jesus was tempted, but he had self-control. He didn't give in to those temptations. So let's think about some other examples of self-control. Maybe your parents have told you, you know, not to do something. Maybe they've told you, hey, don't play with those toys yet. Wait another hour or two. And so you go, I really want to play with those toys. But you wait. Guess what? You have self-control. Maybe your parents have told you, hey, go clean your room. Oh, 
I don't want to clean my room. That's what you're thinking. But then you say, I need to be obedient. And you go do it. So you have self-control. So self-control is very important. And we see we have a great example, and that's Jesus. And so maybe the next time you might be tempted to do something that is wrong. And you know what? The more we read the Bible, that's going to help us when we're faced with a temptation or we're faced, hey, we need to have self-control. So, what's the last fruit of the Spirit? Self-control. So, as always, I just want to say that I miss you guys. I love you guys. What's the last one? Oh, I hope to see you soon. Have a great, great day. All right, for today's craft, you will be doing this coin sheet because today we talked about self-control because this is the last fruit of the Spirit. And you can see on this coin sheet, that there's a little girl and she has self-control but then there's the little boy it looks like he is upset he does not have self-control so you can print this off at tusculumbaptist.org so have a great time doing this craft